Hello friends, thanks for stopping by. I'm here today with another tutorial about selecting in DP or Digital Performer. If you're like me, you're going to learn a couple things you didn't know. Let's hop right into it. Alright, so the first thing is naming a track, right? When you name a track, a lot of programs are just double clicking, but here it's option click. Like that. Now, up here you can see the, the tabs for um, all the various windows and the tracks in the sequence window are the two big ones. If you're used to Pro Tools, really the edit window is a combination of both of these. With tracks you can see things sort of zoomed out a little more and with sequence you can really get in there and do stuff. So I kind of prefer that because you can just pop from one window to the other. Now if this, here's the track selector, I happen to have it in the sidebar. By the way, when you hide the sidebars, shift, the left bracket will open and close the left sidebar. Shift and right bracket will open and close the right sidebar. Now, I'll open the left sidebar again, and if I don't have any tracks here, and I go into this tracks, and I just double click a track, it brings it up in the sequence window. If I go back and I'm looking, you can see that it's selected and maybe I want to see this one now. It adds to it, right? It's always adding. Ditto here. Now a lot of this has to do with how you have the defaults set up for what edit windows open when you double click something. So let's look at that right now. Command, comma, which will bring up the preferences. And then we go down here to editing and to edit windows. Now, as you can see, just to look at this part down here, the default edit windows, MIDI tracks, for me, always open up in the sequence editor. I just like seeing everything in the sequence editor better. The MIDI editor, I'm not even that used to, really. So the audio tracks also open in the sequence editor. Conductor track opens in an event list. I, I really can't see the conductor track so well in the sequence editor, so I don't want to see it there and sequences themselves open up in the track window. If we look at that, we'll just go here and we'll look at chunks. A sequence is a kind of a chunk. Other chunks are songs and V-Racks. We'll talk about that in a later installment. So if I double click this, it opens that sequence too. That is sequence one. So if I double click a conductor track, it opens up in an event list. If I double click an audio track, it opens up in the sequence editor. If I double click a MIDI track, it opens up in the sequence editor. If I double click an instrument track, it opens the instrument itself. So another thing is if I select a group of tracks and I right click, I can open in and anything that they're available to open in, they will open, even uh, partially. So, in other words, the quick scribe editor, the notation editor, the drum editor, the MIDI editor, all those things will only open this MIDI track. That's it, because you can't see audio tracks in any of those editors. But if I go open in sequence editor, now these things will add to the tracks that are already there. So in other words, if I came here, I grab this, I grab all these, and I go open in, and I say sequence editor. Then there they are down there. They were added to these other tracks right here, which were already open in the sequence editor. So in other areas of the program, however, you can just double click to rename something. For instance, this marker right here, I just renamed it. I'll call it F. Right? Or say over in the chunks window, double click it once, it opens the chunk, double click it again and it pops in to edit the name. Okay, so in the tracks windows, the sequence window, the clips window, all that stuff, here's how it works. If you click and drag, it will select contiguous tracks. If you click, shift, and then click, it'll select contiguous tracks. You can select non-contiguous tracks by command clicking. And if you click on another track, it will deselect 
the other tracks. And by the way, Command-D deselects everything, which is up here in Edit. Deselect all. Now, while we're on the subject, here's another interesting thing. So I'm going to make a selection like that. You notice it selects everything. If I go and just select some various tracks, you can see the selection points, the in and out points, are still here. Now, sometimes what I will do, because I work in bar numbers a lot, so let's say I want to go to bar 13. I want that to be the end point. So I'll just click on this selection start thing right here. And then if bar 49 is my end point, then I will click there for the end point. So I love to select things this way. And then you can just go through and do this. Let's say you're doing bounces. You want to bounce these three together and bounce them out, right? So you would just be able to do that. And then you could do the exact same area with these. For example, if you're doing stems. Okay, so next thing. The track selector is different. Now with the track selector, it's acting like I have the command key held down, right? Because it's selecting non-contiguous things. You can still drag all over everything. And here's another thing. If you option click one of these, it'll only pick that one. If I had everything selected and I wanted to just pick two tracks, I could option click one, let it go, and then just pick the other one. So this is different than this window where if you click one thing, it's going to deselect the others. So you have to hold Command down to select them in this particular field. This sounds more complicated than it is. It's really not that bad once you get the muscle memory going. You'll get used to this pretty fast. Hi, everyone. So it's Reed turned editor from the future. And I have looked over this and I realize that it's a lot of information in a short amount of time. So I'm breaking this video into two parts. And the next part will be coming soon. If it's posted already, it'll be in one of the customary places. Thanks for watching.